Hello everybody, my name is Sankara and welcome to my deck profile for my Golden Land Uriah deck. So, if you want to see this deck in action, then be sure to check the card above to check out last Tuesday's video where I played a bunch of games with this deck and it's pretty awesome, so be sure to check that out if you haven't done so already, and then come back to here for the deck profile. Now, let's not fluff around, let's get right into this. So, the Golden Land plus Uriah has so much synergy, it's insane. That's how I came up with this deck. So I was thinking, you know, Uriah, continuous traps, what deck runs a lot of traps? And there's a bunch of trap decks out there, you know, with trap monsters and stuff. And then I realized Golden Land. Golden Land has a bunch of trap monsters and a bunch of trap cards. Golden Land is very trap heavy and it's a good deck, right? Golden Land was meta for a while. I believe it still is quite high up there, at least. So yeah, Golden Land Uriah, this is what we got. Insane synergy, this deck is absolutely amazing. Let's get right into the deck profile for it. So, first of all, we got um, the Sacred Beast engine. So we got one Chaos Summoning Beast, three Dark Beckoning Beast, and one Dark Summoning Beast. These ratios, I found, work perfectly. You don't really need a second Dark Summoning or Chaos Summoning. It's normally just one. I mean, if you have your eye in your hand, you grab this guy. If you don't, you grab this guy. Any other time, I mean, you've got the extra to summon another one. You've also can summon it with Hyperblaze effect. So, yeah, I only found that I only really need one of these, and that is fine. That is plenty. That's all you're going to need with this deck. Trust me on this, and you'll still get out multiple Uriahs, so don't worry about that. And, of course, three Dark Beckoning Beast and Timed Out due to inactivity. Well, that's bloody awkward, isn't it? All right. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, three Dark Beckoning Beast. Dark Beckoning Beast is your main searcher for this deck. It searches out your Chaos Summoning, Dark Summoning, Uriah, Fallen Paradise, and Opening of the Spirit Gates, and Hyper Blaze. This card just searches like half the bloody deck, so obviously we need three of him. Yes, we got two Eldritch the Golden Lord. You don't need three, two is plenty. Two is honestly like that, that's plenty. Um, the only reason I run two instead of one is because I like to have the extra, and it's always good for Elblixir, and just, it's good to have another one, but two is plenty, you do not need more than two. If you want, you could even swap one out for another, um, a different card that you want instead, but two is good, two is fantastic, we love that. And finally, for the monsters, of course, we have three Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames. Now, if you don't know what this guy does, you special summon him by tributing three face-up traps you control. Um, of course, with this deck, we normally use Chaos Summoning Beast and Dark Summoning Beast to summon him. He also gains 1,000 attack for each continuous trap in your graveyard, and once per turn, this is an important effect that I kept forgetting about, you can target one set spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy it, and they can't activate cards in response to this effect's activation. So once per turn, you blow up one face down card, and this guy is ridiculously easy to summon, and don't worry, He's going to have a crap ton of attack points when you get him on the field, so don't worry about that part. Like, that's always the downside, is his attack is so low. No, this deck. Don't even worry about it. So, I'll get into that a bit later, but that's Uriah. Um, you want three of them, of course, because this is a Uriah-based deck, so I run three of them. You don't necessarily need three of them, but... No, I think three of them is pretty good. You want it in your hand, you want it in your deck, you just want it everywhere. You want to be able to summon this guy, basically, so he's great. So that's it for the monsters. Luckily, with the Golden Land engine, you don't need a whole lot of monsters, because we have trap monsters instead, which is fantastic. And the reason we don't want a whole lot of monsters, I'll get into a bit later. So next for the spells, um, we got one called by the grave, obviously, got to stop those hand traps. Next, we got three Curse Eldland. Um, this is our other big searcher, so this card will search out any of your golden land cards. So it searches out Eldritch the Golden Lord, plus any of the golden land cards, Conquistador, Hakuero, and Golden Land Forever. It searches out all of those things, and it can send Eldritch and Golden Land spells and traps from the deck to the graveyard. And this is like once per turn is the search effect. So this card is absolutely amazing. You need three of them, you want three of them, you want this card in your hand first turn. Cursed Eldlin, brilliant, three of those. Next we got two Fallen Paradise. Um, <coughs> Fallen Paradise is a great card, right? Like, you want this on the field. You need you need to have this, yeah? For any Sacred Beast deck. But the reason I only run two, um, I have not found that I need more than two. We have plenty of search for it. You can search it with Dark Beckoning Beast. Uh, Chaos Summoning Beast is usually how I get it. And you can search it with Metaverse, of course, as well. So, yeah, you only need two of them. 
three is a bit overkill. Um, you could run three, you could swap something out for another, but I went for more traps instead of an extra Fallen Paradise. Uh, but yeah, this card is basically a once per turn pot of greed if you have Uriah on the field, and it protects Uriah from card effects. So this card is like stupid, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but you only need two. I only found that I need two. Two is plenty for this deck, don't even worry about it. Uh, next we've got Harvey's Feather Duster, of course, pretty standard. Um, next up, these two cards are the big ones, Reasoning and Monster Gate. If you want, you can swap out something else for a second Monster Gate. Again, I went for more traps over more Monster Gate. I only use these cards, like, not that often. Um, you don't need to use them, it's not important. But these cards can be a huge boost to Uriah's attack. That is the only point for them. You want to get as many monsters out of your deck as you can and then activate this card. The other good thing about Monster Gate is that it gets rid of your um, Dark Beckoning Beast if this guy stays on the field, which is good. You don't want a zero attack point monster sitting on your field, so that's great too. Um, but yeah, basically when you activate these cards, you just send a truckload of traps to the graveyard and Uriah powers up big time. Like, I think the lowest attack I got after using this, I got like 13,000 attack points. Oh uh, no, one time I got 3,000, but that was a different situation. Point is, these cards, big boost for Uriah, okay? These cards are ridiculous, and they get out a monster, probably, so, you know, that's great too. Um, keep in mind that Uriah cannot be normal summoned or set, so these cards will just gloss over it. So, really, you only have to watch out for seven monsters in your deck that can be summoned with this, which means the odds of you getting a bunch of traps in your graveyard are, like, really high, so... Unless you're me and have terrible luck and all your monsters are just sitting on top of your deck whenever I activate one of these cards. It's so stupid, oh my goodness. But when it goes off, like, it's huge. The payoff is great, reasoning, monster gate, fantastic. Um, next, finally, for the spells, we have three opening of the spirit gates, of course. This is our second sacred beast searcher, searches any of the sacred beast monsters, Uriah, uh, Dark Beckoning Beast, Chaos Summoning, and Dark Summoning. Normally, you'll use this to add your Dark Beckoning Beast unless you already have them in your hand. Um, but yeah, opening of the Spirit Gates is fantastic. This is also the card which um, a lot of people actually run this in Eldritch decks. The reason is because it has such amazing synergy with the Eldritch card. So that's where it sort of, the synergy works, both with this card and with the fact that Eldritch uses trap cards. So um, with this card, if you have a level 10 monster once per turn, you can add a continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. And if you don't know, Eldritch the Golden Lord himself is a level 10 monster, so is Uriah for this deck. So with this card, you use this card, um, get your Dark Beckoning Beast and do all the stuff with him, and then you use your Cursed Eldlin, right, do all the stuff with that, get your uh, Eldritch in the graveyard, of course by his own effect, send Cursed Eldlin to the graveyard to special summon Eldritch the Golden Lord, and then once he's on the field as a level 10 you can use Opening of the Spirit Gates to bring back Cursed Eldlin. So it just recycles your spell cards and allows you to continue popping out your Eldritch um, whenever he's in the graveyard. So the synergy with this card and the these cards are, it's amazing, like this deck runs so well because of that, like, such good synergy with all of these cards working so well together. Finally, let's move on to the trap cards. So first of all, we have Anti-Spell Fragrance. Um, <coughs> you could run more of this if you wanted. I deemed it, um, this card works great with Uriah for several reasons, right? First of all, it's a continuous trap, so powers up Uriah can be used to tribute to summon him. Second of all, it works with Uriah's effect. That being, um, this card will force both players to set spells before they activate them. Um, normally you'll activate, like, all the spells you're going to activate on your first turn, so like it hardly even a drawback for you. Like this, it won't matter. It won't matter. But it will drastically slow down your opponent, most likely, unless they're running an Eldritch deck. So this card is great. Slows down your opponent. It also forces them to set their spell cards, which can then be destroyed by Uriah's effect. So this card just works great with Uriah. Um, I only use one of them because. You know, it's not that needed, but if you want more, by all means, go ahead, swap something else out for it. I don't know what you would swap out for it, but by all means, go ahead if you want that extra destruction. Anti-Spell Fragrance is a pretty good card to run with this deck. Next, we've got three Conquistador of the Golden Land. Fantastic, shouldn't need to explain. Uh, two Dogmatic Punishment, two Eldlixer of Scarlet Sanguine. Um, there are a lot of Eldlixer cards that are pretty good. The other ones are great, but these two are the trap cards, which is why I went with them. Um, to power up Uriah more. Uh, next we've got three Golden Lamb Forever. I wanted the extra negation um, with this card just because, you know, rogue decks, they, they need that negation, right? Negation is always fantastic. So three Golden Land. I can also be searched with Cursed Eldland and Eldlixer, of course. Two Hakuero of the Golden Land. 
Um, some of you might prefer three instead of three Conquistador, but I greatly prefer being able to destroy cards on the field rather than banish cards in your graveyard. But it depends on your opponent, I guess. Um, what kind of opponents you go up against will decide whether which one of these you want, but I think for the most part we'll want that triple Conquistador, right? Um, he's also... No, he doesn't have more attack. This is more attack, but oh well. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I prefer the Conquistador over Haguero. That's just me. Um, next, we got three Hyper Blaze. This card is the bread and butter of the deck, right? This card is the Uriah specific trap card. It's absolutely amazing. It, it does it. This thing does everything, right? This, this is the OTK card right here. So quite often, um, you'll have trouble boosting your rise attack and someone pointed out in the last video the comment got removed by youtube or by themselves or something but um yeah so one of the problems with this deck is that the trap cards like to banish themselves from the graveyard but then they replace themselves and they stay on the field is also important so it doesn't matter if these are in the graveyard because hyper blaze with this card when an attack is declared involving Uriah, you can send a trap from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and Uriah's attack becomes attack and defense becomes 1,000 times the number of trap cards face up on the field and in either player's graveyard. So not just continuous traps, any traps on the field and in the graveyard. So we have a bunch of traps that stay on the field. We'll have a bunch of traps that stay in the graveyard. We got Monster Gate to just dump all of the shit in the graveyard, right? So it doesn't matter that these cards aren't continuous traps because Hyperblaze is ridiculous and your opponent might have traps as well so Hyperblaze is just racking up those trap cards uh, racking up those attack points I think the lowest attack that I've got running Hyperblaze was like 5,000 attack which is stupid. I mean, what's getting over 5,000 attack points? Very few monsters can get over 5,000 attack points. That's the lowest that it's been when I've activated Hyper Blaze, if I am not mistaken. Might have been 3,000, might be the lowest, but even then, like, 3,000 is stupid amounts, and then you just keep throwing out more. Like, this card keeps sending a trap every time, and this is once per battle, not even once per turn. Right, this is once per battle, the effect lasts for the end phase, so with each Uriah, you can activate this card. So as long as you have, like, just a, a few traps in your graveyard, your Uriah's attack points is just gonna go up, and then you're just gonna do some insane damage. Like, this is an OTK card right here, which is why we're running three of them. We definitely want this. Also, if your Uriah, um, somehow gets destroyed, which is unlikely with Fallen Paradise and its stupid attack, um, then Hyperblaze can bring it back from the graveyard ignoring the summoning condition so you know that's great as well and um, that's that's some good backup but yeah hyper blaze just stupid attacks um yeah really high attack this is this is what this is what makes the deck the otk this is the card right finally we have one infinite impermanence um i used to have more but i swapped them out for a golden land forever simply because golden land forever can be searched by curse to eldland and scarlet sanguine so um, I'd rather have that search ability and just being able to get it out quicker than have multiple impermanence. Um, but if you want, you can do infinite impermanence. Infinite impermanence is a better card, I would say. Um, it can negate a bunch of stuff. It can be activated from the hand on your turn. Um, but Golden Land Forever can be searched, which is why I went for that. Instead, I went for the search ability. I just thought that was better. And it helps us get through the traps a lot quicker as well and gets it to our hand faster. And finally, one Metaverse. Reason we're running this instead of terraforming is simply because it is a trap card which boosts your eyes attack. And that is the only reason. That's the only reason. It's also why we run it instead of Fallen Paradise. But you should do that anyway because search ability thin out that deck so that's it for the main deck um i will quickly go over the extra deck there's not much to say about the extra deck um so we got two elder entity natus and one fossil warrior scale knight obviously these cards are here to send to the graveyard with punishments effect and you get extra destruction off um depending on what you want if you want to blow up a spell and trap right then and there then Natis is the way to go, or a monster. Um, but if there is nothing else that you want to destroy except what you're hitting with punishment, then you send Skull Knight and you can use his effect later to blow up a monster. Next we got uh, number 81, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, two Gustav Max, that's right, two Gustav Max and one Juggernaut Liebe. So Juggernaut Liebe himself is just an OTK in a single card. 
Um, the reason I have two Gustav Max is because very often I have four level 10s on the field. Like, this happens a lot. <laughs> and with four level 10s, um, you can summon two Gustav Max, and two Gustav Max is half of your opponent's life points. So, if you don't have the Hyper Blaze and can't get any damage from Uriah, if you manage to deal 4,000 damage with your double Eldritch, then you just go into two Gustav Max and that's done. 4,000. Too easy. Like, fantastic. That's, that's amazing. So, yeah, that's why we run two of those, is because, like, it does come up. Um, you probably won't need two of them, but you can summon two of them. It happens. Um, but yeah, Gustav Max has been used, like, it's just a great card to finish off your opponent. 2,000 points of damage, like, that's, you need it in level 10 decks, like, you gotta have it. Um, next we have Appaloosa Bow the Goddess, Boral Sword Dragon, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, a Link Spider, which if you don't know, you can summon using your, um, Golden Land. Trap monsters, they are treated as normal monsters when they're summoned. Um, McKnight Crusadia Avramax, and finally Salomon Great Al Almirage. Um, I didn't have this in the deck when I made the showcase video, which is why you never see it, but this card is actually pretty great. Um, it's mainly just to get rid of your Dark Beckoning Beast, right? So once you normal summon Dark Beckoning Beast, and then if you go into Chaos Summoning Beast, then you're left with the zero attack monster just sitting on the field doing nothing. Um, so Almirage is great to get rid of that if it's still on your field, and also provides protection for your Uriah in case you don't have Fallen Paradise. So Almirage is just a great card to run with these um, Sacred Beast deck, I guess. And yeah, that's the whole deck. So once again, be sure to check out the deck showcase by clicking on the card above. Seriously, if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. It's a great video, if I do say so myself. Um, the editor did fantastic on it. I think it's pretty awesome. So be sure to check that out. It's pretty fun to watch as well. And give this deck a try for yourself. Like, this deck is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the comments below any questions about the deck, why I did something, or just how to run it. Like, if you don't know how to run Eldritch properly, then feel free to ask me in the comments below, and I'll let you know. But also, like, go check out the deck showcase, because it might answer a lot of those questions. And if you still have questions, then, then ask in the comments. Uh, anyway, <laughs> leave a like and a comment anyway to let me know what you thought of this deck, um, and if you use this deck for yourself, then let me know how that goes as well. I would really love to hear it. I respond to pretty much all of my comments, so, you know, do that. It's, it's great. I love talking to you guys. Join the Discord server as well, link in the bottom the description, and satisfy me by hitting that subscribe button to see more Sacred Beast decks later this month. I'll be doing a Haman deck, Raviel deck, and then all three of them for the Armor Tile deck. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when those come out. And thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Ben Sankara, and until next time, see ya.